Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to explain you BJT carrier distributions in different operational regions of BJT. In my last video, I have already discussed about varieties of operational regions of BJT. There are total four operational regions, saturation, forward active, reverse active and cutoff. To have saturation, emitter base and collector base junction that should be there in forward bias. To have cutoff, emitter base and collector base junction that should be there in reverse bias. In forward active, emitter base junction will be there in forward bias, collector base will be there in reverse bias. In reverse active, emitter base junction will be there in reverse bias and collector base junction will be there in forward bias. And this is applicable for PNP as well as NPN transistor which we have already seen in my last videos of playlist of electronic devices. Now here in this video I will explain you how carrier distribution will happen. So to understand carrier distribution first you need to understand carrier distribution in PN junction. It is very essential you should know first how carrier distribution is there in PN junction. So for that here what I will do is I will be considering P plus N junction. So first I will keep P plus N junction in forward bias, then I will keep P plus N junction in reverse bias and here I will be explaining you minority carrier distribution, right. So in P plus region, minority carriers will be electrons, so NPO, in N region, minority carriers will be PNO means holes, right. Here we are dealing with to plot about this minority carrier distribution in forward bias and reverse bias. But first you need to understand minority carrier distribution under zero bias. So if you observe P plus is having minority carriers that is electrons that is having lower concentration and N region is having minority carriers that is holes that concentration is higher. So you might be having question like why holes concentration is higher in N region compared to electrons concentration in P plus region, right. So that you can understand from mass action law. Like so you see as per mass action law, what you can say? Mass action law says NP is equals to Ni square. So let us talk about first P plus region. So in P plus region, what will happen? P plus region, P plus region is having, is having acceptor impurities. So you can say P is having P is equals to Na and in P plus region minority carriers are electrons so N is equals to NPO, N is equals to NPO. So if you want to calculate NPO as per mass sections law, so you can say NPO that will be Ni square by P where P is Na. So you can say NPO is Ni square divided by n a and if you talk about n region then n region n region is having which impurities donor impurity so small n is equals to n d and this p is minority over here so here p is p n o right so here if you want to calculate p n o from this then P N O that is N I square by N where N is N D right. So N I square divided by N D. If you observe here carefully, if you observe here carefully, then you can easily understand one thing. See in P plus region, acceptor concentration is high. In N region, electrons means donor concentration that is bit lower over here. So as Na is greater compared to Nd, you can say NPO that is lower compared to PNO as see this is there in denominator. So based on mass actions law you can understand this. If P plus region is there then minority concentration will be having lower concentration. If we have P region then minority is having bit higher concentration compared to this. So as if you have higher doping concentration minority concentration will decrease. That is one thing that you can understand over here and this dotted line that is therefore that is therefore equilibrium means here we are not applying any biasing 
So you see here without biasing by this blue color lines are drawn. I hope you have understood how these values are there, right? So relative values that I have plotted over here. Now what will happen in case of forward bias? So in case of forward bias, depletion region width that will decrease. Remember this in PN junction. If PN junction is there in forward bias, depletion region width will decrease. If PN junction is there in reverse bias, depletion region width will increase. Right. So in forward bias, depletion region width will decrease. And in forward bias, as depletion region width decreases, what will happen? As it will decreases, see towards the end, it will be like this. Towards the end, it will be like this. Right. And nearer to depletion region, this minority carrier concentration that will increase like this. You see, it will increase like this. Right. And see here, we are having depletion region. Right. So, in depletion region, we don't plot this. Now, here we are having N region. So, in N region, towards end, it will be like this. But as you approach is nearer to depletion region, it will rise like this. Right. It will rise like this. You see, it will rise like this. Right. It will be like this. Now, there can be second question. Why value over here is higher compared to here? So, again, same reply will be there. As per NP is equals to NI square, if concentration over here is lower, then minority will be having higher concentration. So, this is what we are plotting for minority in forward bias. So, in forward bias, nearer to junction, value will increase. In reverse bias, in reverse bias, nearer to junction, value will decrease. You see how. This P plus N junction, that is there in reverse bias. So, this is depletion region. So, here value will be minimum that you can say. After that, you see here it is there on NPO equilibrium. It is there on NPO equilibrium, right? But as you go nearer to junction, it will decrease like this. Here it will be minimum. And as you go nearer to junction, you see it will decrease like this, right? So, that is how graph will be there in reverse bias. So, here are two things that you need to understand. See, first is, what is the value in equilibrium? So, equilibrium value depends on concentration. P plus is having lower minority concentration. N is having higher minority concentration. Relatively, we can understand this. Second is, in forward bias, depletion region width will decrease. And nearer to depletion region, minority will increase. As you can observe over here. In reverse bias, depletion width will increase. And nearer to depletion width, minority concentration will be less. That is how things are there. Now, based on this, you can understand BJT carrier distribution in different modes. So, as I have told you, if you have, if you have emitter base junction in emitter base and collector base junction in forward bias, BJT will be there in saturation region, right? If both are in reverse bias, BJT will be in cutoff region. If emitter junction is forward bias, collector junction is reverse bias, it will be forward active. If emitter is reverse, and collector base is forward, then operating region is reverse active, right? But here for plotting, what I am going to do is see here vertically VEB is there, right? Emitter base junction and horizontally VCB is there, right? So, what it means if it is positive, here there is saturation region. If VEB is positive, VCB is negative, here it will be forward active. Here both are negative means it is there in cutoff. Here VCB is positive. Here VCB is positive and VEB is negative means it is reverse active. Right. So that is how things are there. So now what I will do is I will be going to plot minority carrier concentration, minority carrier concentration in first quadrant. So in first quadrant, both are forward bias means it is there in cutoff. Let me note down that it is there in cutoff region, right? Now in cutoff region, see both are in forward bias. And you should know emitter is having highest doping concentration, base is having lowest and collector is having moderate, right? So based on that, you can understand this. See minority concentration in P plus that is NPO and its value is minimum. 
in p collector region this value is bit increased over here why the reason is doping concentration in collector is lower than emitter and least doping concentration is there with base so minority carrier concentration in n type is p and that is having highest value so this is there in equilibrium now we are providing this emitter junction and collector junction je and jc in forward bias so you can observe depletion region width that is decreasing here that is first thing Second is, see, as both are in forward bias, as both are in forward bias, here value will be minimum over here. But as you go nearer to junction, in forward bias, what will happen? Minority carrier concentration that will increase. Right. See, this is also there in forward bias. So, here minority carrier concentration that will increase. Right. Here it will increase. That is how it will increase. You can observe over here. Now, what will happen at base? So, if you talk about base, see here emitter junction is there. So, as this is emitter junction, emitter is having higher concentration, here value is higher. And as you go towards collector junction, here collector is having lower concentration, so its value will decrease like this. So, this is how, this is how, see this is how we are having minority carrier concentration in cutoff region for BJD. Now, if you observe here, second scenario is there in which VEB that is positive and VCB, you see VCB that is negative. So, this is collector junction, this is emitter junction, right. So, you can understand, see collector junction is in the reverse bias, so this depletion region width is more and emitter junction is forward bias, so depletion region width is less. So, as emitter junction is in forward bias, you see here value is less and as you go nearer to junction minority carrier concentration that will increase like this right it will increase like this you can observe i have drawn it over here you should be a bit careful when you draw this right and this is there in reverse bias so in reverse bias what happens initially value of uh, this concentration is less and then it will increase and it will be happening like this right it will be happening like this you can observe so this is how this is how we can have plotting of minority carrier concentration and if you observe the condition of base so in condition of base see this is in reverse bias so here minimum value will be there this is there in forward bias so here higher value will be there and linearly it will decrease like this right this is how minority that we can plot in in this VEB is forward bias and VCB is reverse bias means this is forward, this is forward active mode, right? This is forward active mode. Now you observe here, see both are in the reverse bias. So that is cut off, that is cut off. Now as both are in the reverse bias, what will happen? Minority that will be happening like this, you see. In reverse bias, it will be having minimum value here and then it will increase and it will be getting constant on minority carrier concentration. Here also it is minimum. Then you can observe here, it will be attaining the value NPO, right? And as this is there in, both, both are there in reverse bias, here we are having less value, right? That you can say. Now, see, here VCB is positive means VCB is forward bias and VEB, VB sorry that is there in the reverse bias. So this is emitter junction, it is there in the reverse bias, this collector junction that is there in forward bias, right. So in reverse bias you can observe depletion width is more. So in reverse bias what will happen? Here it is NPO and then as you go nearer to depletion region, it will decrease like this in the reverse bias. JC in forward bias. So, here it is constant and as you go nearer to junction, what will happen? As you go nearer to junction, this value will increase. See, it will increase like this. Right. Now, here if you observe, see here if you observe in base, compared to this value will be higher over here and here it will be minimum. So, graph will be like this. So this is 
this is the graph which we have right this is the graph which we have for carrier distribution right so this is for reverse active mode this is for reverse active mode right so there are total four modes of operations you can observe here and based on these four modes of operations we can understand minority carrier distribution as well and minority carrier distribution based questions will also come in competitive examination at that time if you go for derivation and all those things it will take a bit more time but if you have proper fundamentals what will happen in forward bias you see in forward bias it will increase nearer to junction in reverse bias it will decrease nearer to junction that is one thing that should be there in your mind second is if concentration is high then minority will be less over here if concentration is less minority will be high that is second thing that should be there in your mind and based on that you can easily solve questions based on bjt carrier distribution i hope you have understood this till if anything you have to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video